taken from the Ultimate Killer Collection, by Stuart Dandel. Gerald and Charlene Gallego The Love Slave Killers Gerald Armand Gallego, was born on July 17, 1946, in Sacramento, California. Gerald was the product of a long line of career criminals, stemming from both sides of his family. Whether it was nature or nurture that opened the Gallego family up to crime is up for debate, though the tender age at which Gerald started his criminal career, appears to support the former. Gerald's criminal record began at a staggeringly early age. By the time he was six years old, he had charges of burglary and sex offenses. At the age of 12, he was placed on juvenile probation for burglary, and later charged with committing lewd and lascivious acts with a six-year-old girl. Gerald Gallego was already twisted. He was placed in a boys' reformatory school in 1959. In July of 1961, Gerald was paroled and less than a year later, along with his half-brother David Hunt, Gallego was arrested for armed robbery and sentenced to the Preston School of Industry in Ione, California. Gerald escaped shortly after beginning his sentence, though he eventually turned himself in. He was then paroled again in 1963, and in December of that year, Gerald married his first wife. He was only 16 at the time and the lady in question was 21. In April of 1964, Gerald's first child, Krista was born. The marriage was short-lived however, and although we don't have the circumstances surrounding it, if it was anything like his later relationships, violence was involved. Gerald won custody of his daughter Krista and sent her off to live with his mother. On July 12, 1966, Gerald again married. His bride was a 24-year-old waitress from West Sacramento. It wouldn't last however, less than a month later the marriage fell apart. Horrifyingly, it appears that Gerald took enjoyment from beating his new bride and chasing her around with knives. On October 25, 1969, Gerald and his half-brother David were again arrested for armed robbery. They had targeted a motel in Vacaville, California. Shortly after their arrest, the two brothers and another inmate escaped the Solano County Jail, but they were recaptured just four days later. Gerald Gallego was sentenced to five years in prison for his role in the robbery. On October 14, 1967, Gerald married his third wife, a laundry worker. This marriage lasted just one month. He seemed to enjoy beating her as well and he obviously had serious anger problems. A serial philanderer, Gerald's fourth marriage took place in March of 1969, in Reno. His new wife, 19-year-old Harriet, was pregnant by the time their marriage ended, less than a month after it had begun. The family of Harriet referred to Gerald as a Jekyll and Hyde type of character. Although it may be seen from different perspectives and some may not agree, this daughter does not know the identity of her father. On October 5, 1974, Gerald went down the aisle for a fifth time in Butte County. How he charmed so many women with all that violence underneath is a mystery. His new 19-year-old wife was also a laundry worker. On December 12, 1975, Gerald was discharged from parole. He was now free to travel and move however he wished. In August of 1977, Gerald and his latest wife separated. The couple had lasted nearly two years, Gerald's longest marriage yet. In the autumn of 1977, Gerald met a young woman who was already two times divorced, Charlene Adele Williams. They first set eyes on each other at a poker club in Sacramento. Apparently it was love at first sight and the pair immediately hit it off. Their love would have unfortunate consequences for the rest of society however. From the very beginning, Gerald and Charlene had their fair share of problems. He had difficulty achieving and maintaining erections, and frequently blamed this on her, stating that she wasn't good enough, that she didn't love him right. 
it would seem that no matter how hard she tried, Charlene could never satisfy her man in bed. For this perceived slight, Gerald would constantly abuse and demean her. In early 1978, Gerald came home early from work, angry and frustrated. When he got there, he discovered Charlene in bed with a young woman, who by all accounts, wasn't even 18. He then flew into a rage and physically abused Charlene and her young lover, while shouting at and berating them. Eventually the young woman escaped, a fortunate end when it comes to contact with the Galagos. On July 17, 1978, Gerald despicably celebrated his 32nd birthday by sodomizing his daughter, Krista, traumatizing the child. He had been molesting her since the age of six. This evidence would make it appear that his wife's failure to excite him, may have come from more sinister, and deeper rooted issues. By July of 1978, much to Gerald's disappointment, Charlene had fallen pregnant with his child. On September the 11th, 1978, Gerald Gallego decided it was time to turn his twisted fantasies that he had been harboring for years, into reality. He and Charlene hopped into their 1973 Dodge van, and drove off in search of a sex slave for Gerald. They soon spotted two young girls ambling along the roadside, they were 17-year-old Rana Scheffler, and 16-year-old Kepi Vaught. Gerald pulled the van over a short distance away and Charlene approached the girls on the pretext of joining them in the van to smoke some marijuana. It was the 1970s and peace and love was everywhere. Unfortunately for the young girls, they quickly agreed and followed Charlene Gallego back to the van. When Ranta and Kepi stepped into the back of the van, they were greeted by Gerald and a .25 caliber pistol. The frightened girls were then forced to lie face down, as he bound their hands and feet with adhesive tape. Charlene was then commanded to keep an eye on them, while Gerald found a more suitable area for his grievous acts. Once satisfied he had found a quiet place, Gerald brought the van to a stop and quickly unbound the girls' ankles. He then led them out of the van and into the cover of the trees, warning Charlene to stay put. She wouldn't want to see what he was about to do. Hours later, Gerald Gallego returned to the van without the young girls. He took one look at Charlene and recanted the chilling phrase, Ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. Eventually, Gerald did bring the two traumatized girls back to the van, and he ordered Charlene to drive to another area that he had chosen earlier. Once there, Gerald ordered the two young girls out of the van, then he calmly shot them dead. The couple's rampage of murder had begun. Just two days after the girls had disappeared, on September 13, 1978, two migrant farm workers discovered their lifeless bodies in the undergrowth. While this was happening, the domineering Gerald took Charlene to an abortion clinic and forced her to abort their unborn child. On September 27, 1978, Gerald's brave daughter Krista filed charges of sodomy, incest, oral copulation, and unlawful intercourse against her father. Unfortunately the nut didn't close in fast or tight enough. Feeling in a rush on September 30, 1978, Gerald and Charlene got married. Not wanting to face the charges his daughter had filed. As is often the case with such unsavory characters, Gerald decided it was best to get out of the state. By the December of 1978, the couple had traveled to Houston, Texas, and Gerald Gallego took on the alias, Stephen Feel. On June 24, 1979, another Father's Day, Gerald decided he wanted to carry out another abduction, it was his special day after all. The couple went to the Washoe County Fair and Gerald sent Charlene off to find him some new victims. It appears that at this point, Charlene was completely under Gerald's control and was party to his every whim. Charlene soon came upon Brenda Lynn Judd, 14, and Sandra K. Colley, 13. 
she approached the girls and offered them cash to distribute handbills and place them on the windshields of parked cars. It was easy money and the two girls quickly agreed, following Charlene back to the van. However, once they arrived at the van, Gerald Gallego and a .44 caliber pistol greeted them. He immediately forced them into the van and bound their feet and wrists. He then commanded Charlene to drive as he began his depraved sexual assault on the two young girls in the back. Hours later, Charlene drove into the High Nevada desert. Once there, Gerald led the girls off one at a time, carrying with him a hammer and a shovel. It is not known what happened at this point, although with Gerald's history, one doesn't have to take a leap to know it would have been extremely unsavory. In September of 1979, looking to keep a low profile, the Gallegos moved back to Sacramento. Here they continued to use the aliases of Mr. and Mrs. Feel. Gerald took up work as a bartender and soon began having an illicit affair with a woman by the name of Patty, who became pregnant with Gerald's child without informing him. On the morning of April 24, 1980, Gerald awoke Charlene and demanded that she help him find a new victim or two. After driving around for a while they spotted two teenage girls, 17-year-old Karen Shipment Wiggs, and also 17, Stacy Ann Redigan. They were just leaving a bookstore. Charlene approached the two girls and referred back to her first tactics. She offered them the chance to join her in the van on the pretext of smoking some marijuana. The girls, being naive teenagers, agreed and followed her back to the van for a smoke. As the girls got into the back of the van, Gerald greeted them with a .357 Magnum pistol. He quickly commanded Charlene to drive and ordered the girls to undress. The deviant Gerald took turns raping and sexually assaulting each of the girls. After he was content, he again had Charlene drive to a secluded area and led the girls one at a time into the woods, carrying a hammer and a shovel. However in an unprecedented move so far, he forced Charlene to view the graves, which was probably an attempt to scare her into submission. She claimed that she saw movement in one but Gerald insisted that they were good and dead. The couple then left them. On July the 27th, 1980, walkers out for a picnic discovered the remains of Karen and Stacy, in two shallow graves in an area 20 miles outside of Lovelock, Nevada. They had both been raped, and had suffered massive and fatal head injuries by a blunt instrument. Their bodies had also suffered from the attention of coyotes to their remains. In May of 1980, Charlene again fell pregnant with Gerald's child. To say he was unhappy with this situation would be an understatement. On June 1, 1980, Gerald and Charlene Gallego married each other for a second time. This time though, they were wed as Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Robert Feel. The continuous marriages that Gerald went through over the years are an interesting situation. Did he marry these women, Charlene twice, because he thought they were then his property? It would appear not with the ease of the divorces. Or was it because he was really looking to attach himself to someone else? An underlying insecurity maybe? That could possibly explain the power he liked to yield over vulnerable women and his victims. On June 7, 1980, while traveling, Gerald and Charlene spotted a lone pregnant woman hitchhiking alongside the highway. 21-year-old Linda Aguilar was four months pregnant and looking for a lift, unfortunately she was in the wrong place at the wrong time. When the Gallegos pulled over, the young woman gladly accepted the ride and joined the couple in the van. Within minutes Charlene was driving and Gerald was pointing his .357 in Linda's face. After a short drive to a secluded area, Gerald proceeded to rape Linda and then beat her over the head with a rock. To satisfy himself that she was dead, he strangled her corpse for good measure. On June 22, 1980, German tourists walking the beach discovered Linda Aguilar's badly decomposed body. After an autopsy was completed, 
It was determined that Gerald was unsuccessful in murdering Linda, although this doesn't bring much solace for the people who loved her. Linda had awoken after her captors had left, but due to panic and fear, she had suffocated as she tried to escape the send. On the 17th of July, 1980, Gerald's 34th birthday, it seems he liked to celebrate his occasions, he abducted 34-year-old Virginia Muckle. Virginia had been leaving from the tavern where she worked as a barmaid. The difference with this victim and the others, is the fact that Gerald and Charlene knew her, and had been served drinks by her on numerous occasions. The couple were becoming more audacious and in true serial killer form, they were becoming brazen, thinking themselves to be untouchable. Gerald raped Virginia and afterwards she begged him to kill her, rather than suffer any more at his hands. Her plight must have been horrendous. Gerald gladly obliged and strangled her. Her body was then unceremoniously dumped near a pond. On October 3, 1980, a fisherman discovered the new decomposed remains of Virginia Muckle, in some brush near Clarksburg. A month later on November 1, 1980, Gerald told Charlene that he needed a new victim to satiate his desires. Mrs. Gallego was ready as always to oblige. In the early morning hours of November 2, Gerald saw a young couple who would fit his bill quite nicely. 22-year-old Craig Miller, and his fiancée, 21-year-old Mary Elizabeth Soares were standing on the side of the street talking and enjoying each other's company. In his most brazen attempt yet, Gerald Gallego got out of his car and walked right up to them, pulling out a .25 caliber Beretta on his way. He then pointed it at the young couple and ordered them into the car. Unfortunately for Gerald, friends of the pair saw them get into the vehicle and wrote down the license plate number. After driving to a secluded area, Gerald commanded Craig out of the car and as the young man turned, Gerald aimed his pistol and shot him point-blank in the back of the head. His fiancée Mary Elizabeth, looked on in horror, likely aware of her fate from this moment, a truly terrifying moment. Gerald then fired two more shots into Craig's head as he lay lifeless on the ground. After getting back into the vehicle, vile rapist and child sex offender Gerald, ordered Charlene to drive to their apartment. Once back at their home, Gerald took his new sex slave into the bedroom and raped her repeatedly for hours. After his lust was satiated, he ordered Charlene to drive them to a real area. Once there, Gerald ordered Mary out of the car and shot her three times, killing her instantly. Fortunately there were witnesses to the earlier abduction and Gerald and Charlene Gallego's murderous spree was about to unravel. When the young couple, Craig and Mary Elizabeth, failed to come back to meet their friends, the friends turned over the license plate number to the police. The police questioned Charlene and obtained a search warrant for their vehicle and home. It did not take long for investigators to find substantial evidence such as bullet casings and other suspicious tools. After interrogating Charlene, she began to talk, letting detectives know about the spate of crimes they hadn't realized were connected. On January 17, 1981, Charlene Gallego, while in a prison ward, gave birth to Gerald Armin Gallego Jr. Custody of the child was given to Charlene's parents. In 1984, Gerald Gallego was tried for murder in both California and Nevada. In both instances, Charlene testified against him. In exchange for her testimony, Charlene was not charged in California, and she agreed to plead guilty to murder and receive a sentence of 16 years and 8 months in Nevada. Gerald Armin Gallego S.R. was convicted in both California and Nevada, and was sentenced to death in both states. His death sentence in Nevada was overturned in 1999, and he won the right to a new sentencing hearing. However, the new jury also sentenced him to death. In August of 1997, at the age of 40, Charlene Adele Williams Gallego, 
was released on parole from the Department of Prisons Women's Center in Carson City, Nevada. Her lawyer says that she will pursue positive goals in an undisclosed location. Gerald Gallego, fittingly, died of rectal cancer on July 18, 2002, at the Nevada Prison Systems Medical Center. It has been stated that Gerald's extremely abusive childhood and brain damage caused by head injuries sustained in his youth, were the causes of his evil. This may be the case, although it does not distract or alleviate the grievous nature of his crimes.